It's been nine months since the military coup in Myanmar, and the military government has been accused of serious human rights abuses in dealing with the ongoing widespread protests. A group of online investigators in Myanmar and abroad have launched a project called Myanmar Witness to archive and verify photos and videos documenting these abuses taken by citizens on the ground. The project's investigations director, Benjamin Strick, walked us through how they verify these images using tools that are available publicly. Whenever we receive photos or videos or whenever we collect them, we sort of take them through this wash and tumble process to test the information. <laughs> One that we did, which is quite an important investigation, was in Bago, which was an attack in early April where numerous people were killed and, and there was a claim floating around online that heavy weapons were used, so things like this, which is a shell of a, an RPG or a high explosive round fired from a gun. Now, my witness, we collect a lot of images since February 1. And one of the images that we collected from Bago was this one. This image was quite interesting because there were some specific features in it that matched the photo of the RPG uh, round. Now we're able to use two images and we can use something like Google Street View to start driving down the street and identifying perhaps where something was taken. So we can match it up with this roof, this one, and this one. We can prove that it was taken on that street in Bugo, which is where the military were attacking protesters as they fled from that area. We're reporting on a serious event. This is military attacks against civilians, and we need to treat this seriously. We're saying trust the facts that we put out because we're, we're putting them out in methods that you can independently prove. The most important aspect of the project as well, which is as an educational platform. So it's primarily a uh, Burmese driven. So we're, we're bringing in different levels of experience of international experts, but we also have a massive uh, team of, of Burmese investigators. A team of 15 full-time investigators are working on more than 50 different investigations at Myanmar Witness. Eight of these investigators are Burmese. They face significant risks to help share what is happening in their home country. We spoke to one of them, concealing her identity for security reasons. They're the ordinary civilian who are working, living. They just are document and send us what is happening in their surrounding. The journalists have been detained. So yeah, in this coup, the citizen journalist role is very important. They are still sending those kind of useful information and documenting, not, not only to X, but also the social media, uh, mainstream media. There might be some other uh, privacy or security problem if they post those kind of video or photo on their own social media. It can be very risky, not only for us, for their family and for their relative. Military intelligence can do anything and they can trace. They also can see the houses of the family and the, the Facebook user can be arrested for posting those kind of information. There are uh, human rights abuses bad. The international community only see the uh, surface layer of what, what is happening in Myanmar. This sculpture is called The Pillar of Shame by Danish artist Jens Galshiot. It's dedicated to the victims of the 1989 Tiananmen massacre in the Chinese capital, Beijing. It was put up in Hong Kong in 1997. But last month, the University of Hong Kong demanded that it be removed from its campus, where it has stood for 24 years. For the territory's pro-democracy activists, it's a new assault on freedom of speech. Our observer is a member of an artist's collective called Lady Liberty that tries to draw attention to the situation in Hong Kong via art. He helped create a 3D model of the sculpture to ensure its posterity. We're concealing his identity for security reasons. So when we heard the news, we've decided to try and scan the whole thing, if you may. It's a technique called photogrammetry. What it does is it recreates an object or a terrain from the photos. The more photos you have, the more complete the final result will be. And you, know, you can do panoramic shots around the thing that you want to do. You can do drone shots and the program will figure it out for you. They may try to censor public spaces in Hong Kong, but it cannot 
censor the internet or they cannot send armed thugs or police officers or anyone to just take down the internet. If it's once it's there, it's forever. The pillar of shame being in Hong Kong is not just a memory, it's, it's a symbol of the freedom of speech we have in Hong Kong. So by removing this statue, it's really a symptom of what's happening in the city. Every day we're getting less and less freedom. They're cracking down on everything they don't agree with. We used to make art that is very public. It's on the street, it's up there. We're almost like a flash mob. But since the implementation of the national security law, we haven't been able to done any of that. And I think things will only get worse. That's it for this week. As always, you can find more reports from our observers on our website. I'll see you next time.